What is up, Dallas Cowboys fans? Eddie Cartimer here with another Dallas Cowboys Daily Blitz for you on this Monday, November 14th. We talked a little bit about um, the Cowboys lost to the Packers from Sunday and who was to blame. Go check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit now about the uh, Cowboys playoff odds. Has that taken a hit after the loss? The Cowboys' third loss of the season. I saw an interesting thing on ESPN.com uh, earlier about it. Um, and we know that loss to the Green Bay, um, I believe, from what I've read, Cowboys were 195-0, and zero, something ridiculous like that, when leading by 14 or more after the third quarter. So this was, of course, their first loss, and many are calling it the worst loss in Cowboys history. Of course, that's ridiculous, um, just because it fulfills a statistic. Uh, trivia question doesn't make it the worst loss ever. I would argue there were lots of them that were way worse than this one. Um, but, you know, think about it however you want. But, you know, the Cowboys still stand at 6-3. and three. The Cowboys are halfway done now with the 18-game uh, schedule for the season uh, and about to face a, an 8-1 and one Minnesota team that just knocked off the Bills in maybe one of the greatest finishes I have ever seen of an NFL game. And I'm even including the Bills and Chiefs game last year, the playoff game that we all remember quite well. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check out the highlights. It was a, it was an amazing, amazing finish. And of course, the uh, Vikings coming out on top over the Bills. Something I don't know that a lot of people predicted. You know, the Bills probably one of the top three teams in the league. Minnesota, even though going into the game seven and one. Uh, maybe the level of play, the level of competition wasn't as, what the Bills have faced this year. But whatever. Um, I'm sure they'll take it. Uh, but the Cowboys are about to face that 8-1 and one Minnesota team in Minneapolis. And uh, it was curious that the uh, FPI, if you put any stake into ESPN's FPI, the Football Power Index, I don't know uh, the math that goes along with this and all the statistics this thing spits out, but... Um, based merely on the football power index and then some of the X factors that were contributed to the article by some of their local writers for the local teams. So they basically put these in tiers. I don't know. When you look at it, when you look at it as a as a entire as a big picture, all the teams and where they're at, doesn't make a ton of sense, but the teams at the top make a ton of sense. And that number one tier is called the true Super Bowl contenders. Of course, Cowboys not in that tier. The Cowboys fall just out of that tier in the second tier that ESPN is calling playoff locks. So Cowboys join the Vikings and the, um, who else was in that? And the uh, Ravens, the 6-3 and three Ravens in that tier two group of just three teams, the Cowboys, the Vikings, and the Ravens. What do they have to say? They put the Dallas Cowboys' FPI chances to make the playoffs at 98.5%, even though they're third place in their division now. This is all after the loss to the Packers. Uh, they said, quote, the Cowboys, Cowboys are in this spot because of their defense, but it's the offense that pre presents the most upside. Weird. Going 4-1 and one under backup quarterback Cooper Rush gave Dallas a, a playoff cushion and highlighted its potential. If it can survive with Rush, how much can it thrive with Dak Prescott? I think that remains to be seen. The Cowboys offense is a top 10 unit with Prescott on the field. I would dispute that. And Dallas can pair that with a top 10 defense. No question there. Uh, then they mentioned the X factor moving forward. Passing offense. Everyone knows the run defense needs to get better, but the offensive pass game will be more important. The Cowboys need to be able to throw and score more points as they have just 23 pass plays of 20 yards or more. They could also be in the running for free agent wideout Odell Beckham Jr., who is coming off a serious knee injury, but would certainly help, end quote. So yeah, some curious statements there, I think, by ESPN uh, with saying that this team can thrive under Dak Prescott. I'm not a Prescott hater, contrary to what my partners over on the Drunk Sports Podcast think. Um, I was one of the biggest Dak supporters. I was the biggest supporter for him to get paid, and I'm glad he did get paid. But I don't think you can argue with the fact that since the calf injury last year, he has been a completely different quarterback. Uh, maybe with the exception of the Bears game this year, he looked really good. 
other than that, he has looked very mediocre and very average to below average to me. He's looked uncomfortable. He's looked lost at times. He's looked confused by the defense. He's got wide receivers that can't run decent routes anymore since since Amari Cooper's gone. That's not on him, but he's still got to throw the ball to him. So regardless, some of those claims are pretty curious to me. But we'll see as the season goes on. Who are the teams that are in the top tier, the the uh, true Super Bowl contenders tier? Those teams would be the Eagles, the 8-0 Eagles, the 7-2 Chiefs, and the 6-3 and Buffalo Bills. And I don't know that anybody can argue with that at all. It is what it is. So Cowboys got a chance to get back on track um, on Sunday in Minnesota. We'll preview that game coming up a little bit later in the week, and we'll have more Dallas Cowboys news for you as it becomes available throughout the week with injury updates. Will Zeke play? Is he going to be okay? Could he have helped against the Packers? You would like to think so, but uh, we'll find out about that. I'm Andy Carr, Tim. Thanks for joining us here on the DSP Media Podcast Network and on the Fish Report YouTube channel and the Dallas Cowboys Daily Blitz. Find me on Twitter at IndyCarTim. The show is at Cowboys Daily Pod. We'll do it all again later. Until then, boys and girls. We'll see you.